All right, guys, welcome back to another Grow the Earth. And today we're gonna to be talking about fertilizers. Now, if you've been out in your garden, you've seen a plant that kind of looks like it's lagging behind, it's not growing as fast. Maybe the leaves are a little yellow, they're not uh, green. Um, you know, especially with pepper plants, if you don't see that dark green of your pepper plant, um, missing something of a fertilizer may be what you're missing. Um, you may be missing the nitrogen, the phosphorus, or the potassium of a fertilizer. And you can add these things back naturally. You can add them back with compost and with different manures and with different um, materials that you can put into your, into your soil. But for a more, I guess, even approach, uh, you can use a fertilizer, which is going to give you an exact amount of what you're putting into your soil. Adding compost, adding you know manures and so forth, it's kind of a guessing game as to how much you're adding to your bed and how well that is going to help you. Well, with a fertilizer, we have these handy numbers here, the, the N, the P, and the K, which is what those three numbers stand for. Now, the first number that you're gonna see in that sequence is always your nitrogen. And that is going to be something that you're gonna look for that is going to be the, the green of your, your plant. It's what's gonna help your plant grow fast. It's what's gonna help your plant be green and look, appear healthy. Now, the next number, the one right next to that, the one that's always in the middle is your phosphorus. Phosphorus is going to deal with root growth, with um, how your, your plant is uh, going to produce flowers, how it's gonna produce fruit, and so forth. So if you're seeing smaller fruit than, this, than normal, or you notice that the flowers aren't um, popping out, you know, that you've got this big plant, but you don't have a lot of flowers on it, you don't have a lot of fruit on it, that middle number is probably what you're missing. Now the third number, and remember, these three numbers are always in the same sequence. They're on every package of fertilizer. The last one is your potassium. Now, potassium is going to deal with not only uh, the, most of the same things as your phosphorus, your, your roots, your flowers, and your fruit, but it's also going to help with uptake of water and nutrients. If you are adding fertilizers and you're keeping something watered, and it doesn't seem to improve, the potassium side of that, that equation it may be what you're missing because it's there and it's available to your plant, but it just can't take it up. Now, the initial look at this may be, well, Tommy, probably the best thing to add would be one that has the most of everything. But, when we're dealing with fertilizers, we're kind of dealing with, you know, you're dealing with organisms, you're dealing with plants, you're dealing with, with things that are kind of like a human body. You know, with us, too much of anything is not good for us. You know, water, water, we can't survive without water. You can go three days without water. But if you drink three gallons of it within an hour, it will kill you. The same thing with plants. If you get, if they get too much of a good thing, if they get too much nitrogen, if they get too much phosphorus or they get too much of the potassium, it can harm them. Specifically nitrogen, you can actually burn your plants and actually stunt them or possibly kill them if you put too much nitrogen in your soil that is bioavailable to that plant. Now, typically with a organic fertilizer, you can't really do that. Um, I mean, if you're going with a liquid fertilizer like this, you know, and it's natural, you could possibly get into a situation where you're adding too much, but generally, most of your organic fertilizers are gonna have lower numbers because they only have so much as bioavailable and the rest of it is in a slow release form that is going to help over time. And I would say it's probably one of the better things about an organic fertilizer is the fact that almost all of them are going to be slow release. Now, I mentioned something called bioavailable. And what that means is the actual amount that is available to that plant as soon as they come in contact with it. Now, slow release fertilizers, 
They don't actually have any kind of a coating or anything like that on them that makes them release slower. They actually have different things in different forms. So this has a number eight for fertilizer, meaning per weight, 8% of that fertilizer, of that fertilizer is nitrogen. Now, that 8% is what is available to your plants as soon as you put it on there. It has more, but it has to be broken down. Now that would be either through natural degradation of whatever form that they have it in, or it could be that it needs to be broken down by funguses or animals or any number of things, you know, bugs, things like that, that have to break it down, uh, possibly through worms and so forth, in order to make that bioavailable to that plant. Which is a good thing for us because you can take a pellet-sized fertilizer like this, put it in your soil, and it will feed your plants throughout a full growth season because it is slowly releasing those minerals over time. With a liquid fertilizer, a liquid fertilizer is going to give you a boost of these numbers, whatever numbers are on the front here, this will give you a boost of nitrogen of 4% right now. It is available as soon as you spray it on, and as soon as you water it in, it will be able to take effect. But as soon as you get a nice good rain, almost all of this has washed out of your garden and this is no longer effective. The same thing with a, uh, I call commercial or a chemical fertilizer. And you'll notice that a lot of these have higher numbers for the N, the P, and the K. Uh, typically you'll see a 13, 13, 13, or a, you know, a, a 10, 20, 10, or something like that. And typically those are going to be more of a chemical fertilizer. When you put these on and you water them in, they run through the soil very fast. So if you have a fast draining soil, that fertilizer is not gonna stay there for very long. It's gonna be there long enough to have it, some of it absorbed into the plants and then it's going to wash right out the bottom of your soil. Now, the bad part about these chemical fertilizers or a a fertilizer that is not natural is not only does it wash out quickly and you have to reapply it more and more and more, it actually can kill the natural funguses and things that are in the soil that are helping break down your compost and helping make more nutrients bioavailable to your plants. But it can also lock those minerals and those uh, nitrogens and those phosphoruses and those potassiums in your soil to where they will not become bioavailable to your plants. If you look at a chemical fertilizer, a non-natural fertilizer, 99% of the things that are in that fertilizer are something of a phosphate or something of a sodium. You can have to where the actual minerals get locked in to where they will not be available to those plants. And you will see your plants start to suffer, even though you're adding more and more of this fertilizer, they're not able to take it up because you have effectively salted the ground. Now, let's talk about our different plants and what, why we may need something with a different level and one than the other, depending on our plants. Uh, like if you watch the video, and I'm gonna link that right here of where we're planting our carrots, I use this specific fertilizer here, and I list it out in that, and that the reason that I did that is because this is a, uh, a 448. Now, that means that only 4% of this is nitrogen, 4% of this is phosphorus and 8% is a potassium. The reason we went with that fertilizer and not my general fertilizer that I put in my beds is because with carrots, you don't want a lot of nitrogen. Because if you make all of that nitrogen available to that carrot, it's gonna grow a bunch of green 
and then your, your root, your carrot, is going to suffer. So for that carrot, that carrot needs the phosphorus, it needs potassium, and it needs calcium to help grow. So we're going to add a fertilizer specifically kind of geared towards that plant. You know, just like with a tomato. If you have something that's really high in nitrogen, but it doesn't have your phosphorus and your potassium, it will grow big green plants, but then when it comes to the fruiting stage, it doesn't have those other two elements there, and it will not fruit well, and it will not grow as many flowers. So you're gonna have sparse fruiting on it, and your fruits are gonna be smaller. So we need to gear and maintain what levels we want inside of our soil dependent on what we're trying to grow. Uh, uh, a cabbage, a, a lettuce, you know, a, um, a collard green or a, a mustard green or something like that. Yes, it needs potassium and uh, phosphorus, but those are not as important as the nitrogen because it needs the nitrogen to grow big leaves and green and for photosynthesis. And if you don't have the nitrogen available, that plant is not gonna grow well. The phosphorus and the potassium come in as more of the root and for cell structure of that plant and for mineral and water uptake. Now, when we're talking about fertilizers, one of the other things that we've got to we have to, we have to talk about is the fact of, okay, so you wanna grow carrots, so you add this fertilizer to it, but we have to think about what have we already grown there and what have we already got in the ground? Okay, so if you're growing carrots in a spot and you grew, you know, lettuce there last, the, the last crop that you grew there was lettuce, that has taken pretty much all of the nitrogen it can get, and you're probably going to have a lot of phosphorus and a lot of potassium left, depending on what fertilizer you use there for your last grow. So the best way to do that is to get a soil test kit. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can go down to your local big box store, uh, your Walmart, your Home Depots, your, your garden centers, wherever that may be that you usually shop at, and you can buy one of these kits right here. Now this is, is kind of like a snapshot into your soil. It's not going to give you very exact figures, but it will give you an idea of what your soil looks like, what you generally have in your soil, and what components are there and what you may need to add. Now, if you're really worried about what is in your soil and what your makeup and what your composition of your soil is, then your best bet is to reach out to a county extension office and ask them for a soil test kit. Now, sometimes, depending on your county, you can get a basic soil test kit for free. It depends. Some of them you have to pay, some you'll get a basic one for free. Um, and they also have different levels, different levels of how deep they dive into the soil you send to them. Now, this is going to give you a scientific look of what your soil is. It's gonna tell you what your soil comprises of as far as clay, silt, and so forth. It's going to tell you exactly and in what quantity you have nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, uh, the acidity level of your of your soil. It's going to tell you a whole lot more things in more detail, but you will have to pay for those things. Now, the good news is, the one that I showed you is only nine, ten dollars at a store somewhere, and that will get you in the ballpark of where you need to be and what you need to look at as far as adding to your soil. But if we don't do these test kits, and we don't know what we're looking at, then you're just kind of blindly adding things and you're hoping what you're adding is fixing it. So we definitely need to keep an eye on that. We need to understand that before we go adding things, we need to test and we need to know what we're looking at because we may be 
overloading our soil with one thing and not having enough of another because we're just blindly adding things to it. Now also in the world of fertilizers, we have certain fertilizers that are geared towards certain things. Right here, I have a liquid fertilizer that is geared towards fruiting trees. Now the reason that that is, is because it has certain micronutrients, it has a certain amount of nitrogen, it has a certain amount of uh, phosphorus and potassium that are geared and formulated to a fruiting tree. Now, is this gonna hurt for you to put this on, say your tomatoes? Probably not. But it is formulated to deal with that particular thing. Now, um, like I said, this, we had this that I bought. Now this is just a general fertilizer, it's an all purpose fertilizer, but I bought this because of the different components it had to go with my carrots. I have this bag here, which is specifically geared towards blueberries and raspberries and that kind of fruiting plant because this actually has an acidifier in it. It has things in it that are going to bring the pH level down so that that plant is happy. Because with our soil test kit, we're also going to get a pH number. That pH number is going to correspond with what plants like that pH number. Most plants like a six to a seven, which is pretty neutral, but your blueberries and raspberries and that like, they want a four, a five, you know, a five and a half. They want something that's more acidic. You'll have other plants or other root crops that like to have something that's more of a base. You know, they're gonna to wanna to have a seven or higher in order to grow well. When you get your pH wrong, that can, you know, modify and make your plants grow really, really poorly, really, really good. It just kind of depends on what your pH is and what plants you have in that bed. Now, over time, through watering and so forth, your soil will naturally return to a neutral level. So just because you planted that, that blueberry bush two years ago and you put in some fertilizer in it to get that pH level down, doesn't mean that it's gonna to continue to stay that way. We're gonna to have to continue to add things to it in order to get that pH at a certain level that that plant is happy at. Trust me, we planted a blueberry plant uh, a few years ago I didn't know this. I didn't know that it liked a, high, a lower pH like that. I didn't know that there were certain fertilizers like this. And that plant, I noticed, started suffering and suffering until it finally died. Now, the soil that was in that in there is, some, is ones that I had actually uh, taken out of another bed. It was a neutral. It was like a six and a half or a seven. But that plant did not like that. And we needed to add something like this in order to make that plant live. It actually uh, ended up dying and we replanted something in its place. Uh, and until I started doing more research on blueberries, did I find out that they like a lower pH and that is what we needed to do. So guys, I thank you for joining me today. This video is, and these plants and these fertilizers are just like everything. You know, too much of a good thing is, is never good, and not enough of a good thing is always bad. So, we need to keep our life in balance, and that includes our life and our, our relationships, in our finances, in everything we do in life. You know, I, guys, I thank you again for joining me. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. Throw me a comment down there. If there's something that I missed here or something that you want explained better, let me know. I may make a video of it or I may just respond to you directly in the comments and help you with whatever issue that you're asking about. So guys, as always, I thank you for joining me. And as always, I ask you to pray over your family, pray over your garden, and have a great day.